Good morning, all. Um, let's open this um, Risk and Assurance Committee. Um, Deputy Mayor Dale, would you like to lead the karakia, please? Sure. Mai te pai maunga, raro ki te tai. Mai te awatonga, raro ki te awaraki. Tēnei te hapori afi, mai te taratahi, whanau whanau, haramai te toki, humie, huie, tarakia. Right. Um, <clears throat> apologies. Um, I've been advised that um, Marty got COVID in his household. He sends his apologies. Do I have any more? Yeah, uh, the mayor. The mayor. I'm happy to move those apologies. Do I have a seconder? Uh, mayor Dale, Deputy Mayor Dale. <laughs> Oops. You know, from all those. <laughs> 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 Brilliant. So, all, all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Okay. Um, any conflicts of interest for um, items of discussion? There are none. Public forum? None. All right, confirmation of our minutes held 22nd of February. Any corrections? All those. No, no corrections. Um, was, um, happy, to move. happy to move. Do I have a yeah. seconder? Uh, that is Councillor Steve C. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Thanks. Carried. Report 6.1 insurance update. Thank you, Kelly. Key, key highlights, key issues. Sure. Um, uh, so we're currently working through our insurance renewal process um, for the next financial year. Um, I suppose of of particular note in the report of the uh, expected increase in premiums. Um, we discussed it last year as well, but premiums have been increasing significantly over the last few years. We're still working through the renewals process, so we don't have our final figures, but it, verbal indications are at least 20% um, and quite likely higher, particularly for a couple of our more expensive policies, um, material damages and um, public liability. So this report flags a couple of things that the committee and council may like to think about um, in the future. For now, we are well into the renewal process, um, but whether um, council and the, the committee have an appetite for increased self-insurance and, and some other options to potentially decrease our premiums going forward, um, we do broadly expect them to keep going in this direction. Um, I'll leave it there. Okay. Any questions of Kelly? Kelly, I just had a question around uh, under the background, and you've mentioned the um, insurances. Is it you've mentioned the well-being of staff and elected members through trauma and accident insurance? Mm -hmm. I'm just. Can you just explain a little bit more about that? Because I'm just. Yeah, sure. So we so we have a policy that covers um, our staff and our elected members um, should there be a significant accident or something to come to stop them from um, doing their work, or if someone was to pass away as well. We do have some cover in those areas. Um, one of the policies covers council in terms of having to, um, I suppose, hire someone to fill in for a position, um, but there's also capacity there to provide some funds to the um, <coughs> person or their family who have been affected. Yeah. Thank you. Since it's mostly targeted at roles that are hard to replace or take mm. a long time to replace. So well, the good thing is it's not actually a specific individual, and so it's up to so it's up to a certain number of people. Um, so I think in our policy, the current maximum is forty-one people. So if there was um, a huge earthquake and more than forty-one people were seriously impacted, then we would only get cover up to forty-one. Mm -hmm. You'd think it would be very unlikely that it would be um, more than that in an event. Tomorrow at the at, at the first of the workshops, we'll be talking about um, risk profiles and risk appetites for for a whole lot of different things, you know. And Kelly's highlighted here um, 
options such as self-insurance. I mean, some things are higher risk than others. It's up to us to discuss whether or not we look at some of the options because there are layers of insurance for things like property or motor vehicles, things like that. So that will all form part of it. As Kelly's report says, that the long-term plan next year will be the, the opportunity to put forward um, some clear direction as to what our risk appetite is likely to be. So we've got time to consider what the options are, but this is really just flagging just how fast mm, huge. the premiums have escalated, you know, more than double in three years is extraordinary. But I think we're all seeing that in our home insurance and mm. in, in our private lives. So this is just an uh, example of what the industry is facing. And, and I think the other, unfortunately for my sins, attended a couple of insurance workshops in the last three weeks. Um, what we're also seeing is not only this is insurance jargon, it's a hardening of the market. So that means where it's harder to get good prices. Um, and there's a variety of reasons for that. But there's also a risk going forward that you may not be able to get the same level of cover that you currently are able to get. And I think that's what um, Deputy Mayor Dale has talked about. I think it's really important that we talk about that the Chief Executive builds into his work program somehow a discussion with both the broker and elected members over what detail, what have we got, what are we insuring, why are we insuring it, how much is it costing, and what are the alternatives, and we'll talk about it tomorrow, tomorrow, and what are the consequences is if we can't get full insurance, you know, because all of the insurances, all you're doing is transferring your financial risk to another, another organisation and how much you're willing to pay for that financial transfer. Now, if you look at the events of um, Christ, Christchurch and Kaikoura, um, how many years ago was Christchurch and where are they up to with their stadium? All right? And, and, you know, that's not covered by insurance because you're not replacing like with like. So there's a whole lot of dis discussions. Now, the, the issue is um, um, different councils have a different risk profile. So it's very well for one council to say, look, we're going to self-insure up to an event up to $10 million. Well, that would probably potentially bankrupt this council. So it depends on the ability of council to to fund that shortfall should there be a major event. And I think that's a worthwhile discussion that we actually build into the work program. It's a bit late. Um, this is not a criticism, absolutely not. Um, that we actually fully understand what are we actually buying for almost half a million dollars. Because that's probably what it will be, be the following year. I'd like to think it won't be, but yeah. Um, I just had one question um, where you've said one of the options was assume the risk and deal with impacts after the event. Mm -hmm. um, is there any, are we in that space at all with any of our things? So we are for, um, so some of our uh, less valuable assets that we may choose not to replace or it wouldn't be a huge um, amount for us to replace. So yeah. things like um, public toilet at flat point, that's yeah. something that we wouldn't insure because if you know, that's got damaged, mm -hmm. we would just fund the replacement, it's not really worth replacing. Yeah. Um, so there are some assets like that, not a whole lot. Um, we have been, I, I believe, quite risk adverse previously, mm -hmm. so we do have quite comprehensive cover. Yep. So that would be something to consider going forward. And I, and I think um, as well that, that level of insurance, so you can insure, um, say, our building for, or our building for the replacement cost, but then you might choose rather to insure it for demolition and indemnity, which is a lesser amount you would mm -hmm. get back, but there's a much cheaper premium. So that might be relevant if, say, you probably wouldn't replace the building with the same thing, or you might just sell the land if something happened to it. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's definitely different considerations there. Yeah. Does it work for councils like it where I'm just reinsuring a vehicle at the moment where you can nominate a higher excess to get a lower premium? Does that sort of thing apply to... Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> it's another consideration as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
I, I just had printed off a uh, question here this morning from an insurance guy and uh, broker, and uh, flooding was underlined. Obviously, a knee, knee jerk reaction. Yeah. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and uh, I work pretty closely with Napier City. Um, they actually, as part of the flooding this time around, had very little claims. It's mostly outside of Napier City. It's when Napier Hastings City is district. Hastings has had the big one. Which is surrounds Napier yeah. City. Um, and what's interesting too is that um, Napier belong to a, a regional well, actually, the Manor were two Hawks. No, Manor were two Rangitaki. Was it? Can we? Manor were two less. Um, and they've actually grouped their insurance together, <clears throat> and they're not actually. And I think potentially they're hundred million dollar. That's right. Local, local authority. Local, local authority shares, yeah. But the 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 total claim on the the local authority share for that um, group, that less local authority shared service will be $100 million. And you think, wow, that's a lot. But that local authority um, less has got over $2 billion worth of assets being currently insured. So it's actually the insurers will look at that and go, okay, not a problem. But had Hastings been on their own, it would have actually been a significant impact for them. So that's something we, and I know you do collaborative work as well here. We do. We have shared, um, several of our policies are shared um, with South Wairarapa and Masterton. Mm. That gives, gets us a, a better price. Mm. Right. Mm. And the other thing I think we need to think about going forward is what is the impact on the water reforms, whatever that may entail. You know, what are we going to be left with yeah. from a liability perspective? Um, now, Kelly, just explain public liability mm -hmm. and what so, that entails and what's the cost indicatively. So that's one of our most expensive policies. So public liability covers the council should we be taken to court for something. So councils around New Zealand, most recently it's probably been used for things like um, leaky buildings or where there's challenges against building consents being issued. Um, councils are usually last man standing um so claims can be brought against you know architects and different parties but quite often council are the last one standing because they seem to have the most money basically mm. um so that's biggest actually insurance. And it's biggest insurance easiest target yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's right so um i mean that's that's a really important policy for us which we haven't had to claim against, which is great, but um, it is very expensive. And there is a potential as well for that to get harder for councils to get insurance in that area, particularly with more claims coming around the country. Um, so harder to get the insurance and cost increasing as well in those policies. And is that a broad brush protection for the council or is it for Jeff or the senior leaders? It's generally a broad brush for a council. So against a regulatory or a policy decision that uh, was either incorrectly made or didn't align with legislation, so judicial review or, or something. So it's mostly around a um, broad brush for council. We can have public indemnity for uh, for comments that we have made mm -hmm. that are, are false or inaccurate, um, but mostly it's the, that's the claims for those are not nearly as sizable as the claims for a leaky building or, or a, a mm. incorrect regulatory decision. Yeah, I mean, this is, well, we know, like, it, it's no different to your ACC premiums, depending on what your occupation is. You know, if, you, if you're a professional skydiver, your life insurance policy is way up here versus some. So this is just typical of the risk that the insurance industry believes councils are exposed to mm. but this you know this is just receiving this report there's no decisions to be made today but it's a start of a 10. Yeah. it's saying that we need to be having this conversation in terms of this committee uh, evaluating the risks and the opportunities mm. for council to consider in their deliberation through the ltp process yeah um so, brian, yeah, brian. Um, thanks phil um a couple of questions. <laughs> My first question is, um, 
around self-insurance, um, what, in dollar terms, what sort of assets are we looking at self-insurance? <clears throat> So self-insurance, so you could do assets or, or we, it doesn't have to be asset related. You could do things like um, risks risks for them, those staff and elected member policies rather than paying our premiums where you might decide to put um, an amount aside each year and reserve mm. ready to use should something occur. Um, self-insurance for those, I suppose, those assets like I spoke about earlier that you might choose not to um, ensure because of the value or because you wouldn't replace them. Um, so go it's... third party on it yeah. because yeah. Yeah. you cover it, you know. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, no, I, I um, understand it all but, um, because we looked at self-insurance when I was in, in business and um, we decided not to because, and just as well we did because we wrote off two vehicles mm -hmm. in the first year. So that would have been, we would have taken a whack. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm not a fan of self-insurance. Um, the only uh, the other question I've got is um, looking at your um, mechanical mechanical damage. You assume assume the risk and manage it. Basically, have you have you got a motor fusion clause in in your policies for burnt out motors and pumps? Because we've got a lot of pumps, a lot of motors. Not that I'm aware of, but I'd have to. It's policy. It's usually pretty standard. So um, I know we've had um, we've had insurance on we've received insurance claims on pumps before, but I'm not quite sure if it was yeah. damaged or what, what the issue was. I think it's worthwhile looking at that. Yeah. Um, what I'm going to propose, right, just for heads up, I think it's too late for this financial year for this insurance renewal, but I really want to sort of recommend now. I don't know whether it's this committee or council look at in detail. It's not necessarily self-insurance, Brian. Mm. It's saying what are the options about taking on more risk and what is the benefit in terms of premium reduction? And I think that's the discussion that we actually need to have in detail. Um, and we probably need probably about nine months before mm. one um, July next year to actually have that discussion with the broker, understand your your premiums, understand what events you've had, what's the likely um, maximum probable loss that you could have and how much do we actually want to insure, and then have a discussion with the finance team as well. Okay, if we had this event, how much could we actually um, potentially borrow extra, big borrow or steal, also have a discussion amongst the elected members. What wouldn't you want to replace, like those toilet blocks, etc.? And I think it's a quite a it's quite a wide discussion, and it takes to do it properly. We need time and information. And I'm not recommending we can sort it for one July this year. You're just going to well, even more broadly than that, Mr. Chair. If if in our discussions around our risk appetite across a whole lot of activities mm -hmm. of council. If, if we have a discussion about, for example, insurance and decide that our risk appetite is fine as it is or appropriate as it is, then that means we accept the premiums as they land mm. and we don't focus there. We focus on somewhere else where we want to change the risk profile. So it may be that we don't even, you know, that we mm. arrive at the belief that our risk, prof our risk appetite for insurance needs to stay where it is for all these different reasons and then that means we won't spend a lot of time trying to unpick each yeah. policy one by one yeah i don't think it's policy one by but i think we actually need that discussion mm. you know mm. yeah. any further questions comments so um take your advice here mr chief executive it should do we actually need a resolution to actually under the committee to undertake that work, or will you just do it as a matter of the work program? We we run an action point register, so we could just pick it up as an action point from the committee. Yeah, there's, there's plenty of things that we're asked to do that that don't require resolution. Okay, cool. All right. So therefore, do I have a mover for the recommendation? 
Councillor Steve C. We've got to be careful here. We've got two of them here. Do I have a, do I have a seconder? That was Steve G. <laughs> <laughs> um, any further discussion? Hang on, Steve, oh. Steve G's not on the committee. Oh, is that me? Oh, oh, thank you. That's me, yeah. Councillor Grace. Councillor Grace, <coughs> thank you. Observing. Nice try, Mr. <laughs> Just observing. Just observing. <laughs> All right, thank you for that. Um, no further discussion. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Carried. Next item is our um, <clears throat> update on our draft annual plan. Thank you. Uh, Kelly again. Uh, so this report provides an update of where we are up to um, with the draft annual plan. As you're aware, um, we've made the draft public. Um, we've had been open for public feedback, not a formal consultation process. Um, that has closed now. Um, we didn't receive a whole lot of feedback. Um, next step will be to make any final changes, including adding the Mayor's message, and then the plan will come back to Council for adoption at the end of um, June. And we've just updated the key risks, which have um, previous, previously been discussed with Council as well. Cheers. Balanced budget. Oh, so balanced budget. We've noted there that we don't have a balanced budget, which is what we had forecast in the long-term plan. So that balanced budget that we're talking about here and is disclosed in the plan, um, that's under the prudence regulations, um, as our chair rightly pointed out. Technically speaking, under the Local Government Act, we do have a balanced budget because that's your operating revenue to your operating expense. But under the prudence regulations, um, we don't. So it's just a bit of a, an interesting one there. Some of the, yeah. some of the semantics. <laughs> Two different yeah. definitions of a balanced yeah. budget. Yeah, pick which enable one you want. <laughs> no, no, no. We <laughs> will we'll comply with the law. <laughs> um, the issue is that the problem with the balanced budget is it's now got so complicated with a whole lot of other things, it becomes really, really difficult as per the legislation, as per Section 100 of the Local Government Act. The prudence regulations actually has a more defined, and I, is, and I would say is a more conservative approach, and you don't have a lot of development contribution income compared with some councils. Um, they remove the development contribution income in its totality from the prudence regulations. However, within development contribution income, there's an interest component. Now, for some councils that have actually got lots of debt associated with development contributions, a la Auckland, well, not quite the same degree, but Hamilton certainly, Tauranga, um, basically potentially up to 25% of the development contribution income can relate to interest. So they're actually removing that entire income, but the interest expense still remains in the PL. So that's why I'm saying it's a very conservative approach. It was, I know, person who wrote the regulations in DIA, a very conservative person, and they told me that in their opinion, you shouldn't be trying to recover interest costs through development contributions as a matter of personal preference. It's his personal view, but that's flowed on into regulation. So that's why I'm saying it's a very conservative approach. Me beeping as well. So, any? This is your annual annual plan. Any comments from the Risk and Assurance Committee? I think. My personal view is I think you've actually engaged with the community, which was appropriate. That's my view. Um, I don't see any particular issues that I think I need to bring as the independent chair over your annual plan. Brian. Just one question. Um, the results of the feedback that we received, mm -hmm. will they be available at some stage of we got an email. It was only three. There was three, one of which related oh, to speed management. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was it. That's all. Well, they oh. more particularly, there was no 
options or solutions yeah. put forward. It was just an opinion, and rightly so, yeah. but there was nothing for us to take and work forward <laughs> with. Okay. <clears throat> it's simple. I just so thought that was the first. first <laughs> that was the final. That was it. That was the worst three. <laughs> um, okay. My only um, question is, I wonder if you could explain, Kelly, how our decision that we made to not fund the full depreciation on three waters, mm -hmm. how that impacts things now that the government have pushed three waters out by yeah. a year or two or three. Sure. But that's a good question. That's a really good <laughs> Uh, so I say I think the decision to still fund 50 percent, it was, you know, in hindsight, a really good one mm. because subsequent to council um, giving us that guidance, yes, the three waters has been delayed. Um, so we do currently have um, reserves, depreciation reserves, particularly reasonable amount for wastewater, mm. less so for water, um, and the depreciation or the the amount of revenue we will receive for the depreciation this year will be enough to cover those renewals. Correct. But um, it is, is definitely something that we have flagged for consideration for the long-term plan. Mm -hmm. um, that we might need to fund the whole thing for the first You will need to think or, about yeah. um, how much Hope we may have more information then about when council is expected to go because that definitely impacts things. Mm -hmm. But what your appetite is in funding depreciation going forward, whether we whether you want to leave it the same or increase it, or previously we have discussed the potential to not fund any depreciation and instead to loan fund our um, capital projects. Mm -hmm. So there's a few few things to think okay. about. Going forward. But for this annual plan, we're good. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know the team. Uh, you will recall we had a conversation and the team uh, changed the whole basis of the inputs um, in about a week. Uh, so they they really pulled a rabbit out of the hat and it was uh, it was timely and a relatively prudent decision. Fair to raise that point because yeah. we are risk and assurance. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess the risk is mm. when we're beginning our next annual plan and long-term plan, hopefully by then we'll know who the government is and what the direction might be. The risk is that affordable water or three waters materially changes the process or is delayed again. Mm. Yeah, and I think that's probably more discussion <coughs> for the LTP right, item. I've got some um, interesting views on what potentially could happen with the three waters. I think now some of the implementation timetable has been over-optimistic in terms of the amount of work that still needed to be done. But again, all we, we, from what I hear, most of what we hear is anecdotal and speculative. We need the, we need the actual oh. written direction from DIA to, to enable us to put some plans in place. And can I, can I add, we also need to refresh our infrastructure and asset management plans, yes. which will then inform how yeah. much capital yes. we need to invest on our, yeah. our specific yeah. network. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the piece that is the most yeah. important consideration that we would want to have when we're looking at how much we need to fund yeah. through fire rates. I'm actually happy to have that discussion, but maybe it's actually better in terms of the high level plan for the LTP about what needs to be done about those three waters. Okay. I think you know the the annual plan. We're in a bit of a rock and a hard place in terms of three waters now. But I think my personal view is you've actually come to a, having observed, come to a, a prudent position based on the information you have. Right. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Basically, saying this is your this is your decision, right? Not the the risk and assurance. Committee, but I think Grace, you raised a really good question about what it means in the long term. And we'll talk about that in a couple of items. Um, any other comments on that report? Um, can I have a mover for the recommendation? Deputy Mayor Dale, do I have a seconder? Oh, no. Councillor Steve C. 
All those, no further discussion. All those in favour, please say aye. Okay. It's carried. Annual report update timeline 2023. Yes, so we are just about to start preparing our annual report um, for the financial year in June. Mm -hmm. um, this report gives a high level timetable and um, raises a few risks. Uh, in particular, I wanted to point out the risk around um, the resident survey. Mm -hmm. So previously we've discussed with council the, the survey and particularly looking at the framework, our performance framework and for the long term plan, how we might want to measure different things. Um, we were given some direction by council that um, we wouldn't do the survey this year for a number of reasons. The number of expectations we had going about specific issues or items this year. Um, the survey was also due at the same time as the national census. Um, there is a cost involved in, and there's a low response rate with a declining response rate um, and probably some concerns about who is and isn't responding to the survey. So, so based on that, we were given a view that we should pause it for this year while we reassess the framework as part of the long-term plan. So we did um, raise a few a few potential outcomes with that. Um, I've spoken to audit now. Um, they have indicated that they would want to take that to an opinion review committee to consider a potential impact on the audit opinion. Um, because although they're not individually considered material measures as part of the audit, because we do have quite a few measures that are recorded on using the survey, they will want to consider that cumulative effect and it may be that we have something on the, on the qualification and the audit opinion specifically to say that a survey wasn't conducted um, this year. So that, that is something um, that we would like the committee to consider, whether um, you're comfortable still with that approach or you would like to um, raise that, that back to council again or, or what you might like to do there. Um, that was probably the main thing I wanted to flag in the report. Yeah. Questions of Kelly? Grace? Um, yeah, I'm definitely of the opinion. I think we need to rethink our <coughs> way we do surveys. I'm all for getting everyone's feedback, but I think we want to have good feedback. That's in quantity. We want to get something that's substantial. And I think if we had a workshop as council to figure out what's our best way going forward, then we can have a really good survey in 2024 but i think there's no point to um yeah push for it this year when we're, we're getting that downturn we're heading towards an election i think there's going to be poor poor turnout in this one as well i think thank so you you council as well recall that we are surveying specific items so mm. we're surveying the speed management review we'll survey uh feedback on our bylaw for freedom campaign uh, we're doing surveys uh, around uh, sale of buildings, etc. Um, what this item relates to is a plan that was set three years ago as part of our long-term plan, and, and uh, council at that time committed to undertaking a resident survey. So, the audit uh, office are saying, "Well, you set a plan and you committed to doing something, and now you're proposing not to." Um, that uh, can be can be changed again at long time, a long-term plan time, which Kelly has pointed out. And uh, if council wish to do that, they they certainly can. Um, but this is the last year of our last annual plan as part of the long-term plan uh, to, to be held to something that was set three or possibly three and a half years ago in terms of what you would like as a specific measure um, is a little bit binary. And I think uh, as council, we're a, little, a lot more fluid in terms of understanding our community's needs. So, uh, you know, from from my perspective, I would be relatively comfortable noting a um, non-compliance with this particular aspect of our plan, uh, even if that did end up with a qualified audit report or a matter of emphasis. Can I say that, like, in terms of the risk and assurance, our mm -hmm. our focus how great a risk is a qualified report on this item alone? Yes. And in my opinion, very low. Be different if it was something of major 
business relating to council integrity or council um, operation. This is a this is if it if it ended up that way, it would be a comment from audit to make us mindful, keep us mindful of the importance of customer satisfaction surveys in their opinion. And I think what we have said is we're not saying no, never, as Grace said, we're mm. saying not right now for yeah. these valid reasons. And when we revisit it next year with something more comprehensive or more appropriate, then we're back on track. So I, I personally don't think the risk of a potential qualified report for just this single item is um, of concern, in my opinion. Can I just add as well? So my, so my approach, should we not do this survey, would be to include last year's results mm -hmm. and then to add disclosure to say that they are last year's results and a decision has been made not to complete a residence survey this year and mm -hmm. the framework is being considered in the LTP. So we would have a bit of an explanation in, in the annual report as to why we have last year's results and what's expected to happen. Yeah, just um, also the the um, the things that we are consulting on. Um, how can we do we have to do we include the results of those consultations in there? Is that is that not qualify as such or? Well, they they are the measures that are in the annual report. Mm. There's about sixteen odd measures yeah. in the annual report, and they cover everything from the quality of the footpaths, yeah. the quality of the roads performance of water quality, et cetera. The things that we're consulting on uh, are different things, uh, specific yeah. things, freedom camping bylaw, yeah. interim speed yes. management, sale of an asset, et cetera. So there's so this different to the measures that we do have in the annual report. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, it's not as if we're not consulting. That's, not, that's what I'm trying to get out. Uh, we're consulting on, on things that we yeah. believe the community are specifically interested in yeah. rather than a general perception survey on whether whether councils uh, are performing. We've sort of got to qualify that some. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to write some 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 notes now. Right. If I can, I totally agree with um, Deputy Mayor Dale. My view is that it's a perception survey, mm. and the perception it's based on how people feel on the day, <coughs> what the last perceived interaction with council was, um, and particularly over State Highway Two at the moment, which is actually not a council function. I've seen. Right? Um, I think it's worthwhile this committee, as indicated in the report, formally recommending to council considering the risks around the qualification make some specific recommendations to council um, i agree that the qualification oh the, the, council of steve has a question oh, okay sorry <coughs> i haven't gone yeah so, so i just actually, didn't want you to wrap up no i wasn't wrapping up just putting my view forward all right and no no you, um and it, and it can be shot down in flames right that the qualify it's it's a I I would be very surprised if it was actually a formal qualification that we actually haven't complied. It's basically should only be an emphasis of matter to say we haven't done it. And I think what <coughs> Kelly has talked about and the chief executive has talked about, we need to explain very carefully the rationale for not doing it. Yes. It's not about we don't believe that surveys are not valid. I think I would actually like council to formally review how it measures its community satisfaction as part of development of the LTP, which needs to start early, not later. And that then you might actually have answered that or, or had, a, had a plan for that before the audit actually sign off the annual report. But a pressure, Mr Chief Executive, I'm sorry. But I think you need to think, start thinking about how you do that in the future. So when you have this formal discussion at the end of the annual report process, you've already got the answer available to provide audit um, as to the reason why you didn't do it. Um, and I think too is, I think the days of community surveys uh, are past in terms of the phone surveys or however it's done. Um, how many people 
apart from members of local government have actually got my cell phone number. I actually don't have a um, landline at home. So people can't get in touch with, with me. So it's actually over the last three years, the survey ability to survey has actually changed dramatically as well. I think that should be considered by council no. and as being a reason for not actually undertaking the survey because you're only surveying now a very small group of potentially the community. So to me, there's a number of factors that I think we as a committee need to actually articulate as part of that resolution. Councillor Steve, <laughs> put you on the spot now. No, I'm, I'm just in agreement with what you said, Mr Chair, that I, I think the perception is always surrounding what's happening um, to the community that's pushed onto them by central government. And you've mentioned Waka Kotahi as a prime example, but we've got Kiwi Rail now at the moment. Oh. And yep. Yep. as soon as you get a negative impact, something impacting them negatively, the community that is, they're going to, that's going to impact negatively on a survey. No matter what else, whether the council's doing everything 100% perfectly, they're still going to react negatively to it. So it is definitely perception. <laughs> But I think we've got to be careful there. We can't just say we're not, we're trying to avoid negative comments. What we're trying to do is actually get feedback on things that the council is responsible for mm. and or has significant influence, not things that are actually influencing people's views that we've got no control over. And I think mm. that's the issue. Look, if we've done something wrong and we've got a poor community satisfaction with that. We should know about it, mm -hmm. but we don't want their general <clears throat> perception on our road network to be blamed on what's happening on State Highway 2 at the moment. Well, that's where the comments of yeah, races I, is yeah. appropriate because mm -hmm. in my time, I don't can't recall us ever sitting down and developing our own questions and our own framework. It tends to be a template or a, or a standard. Yeah local yeah. government type yeah. questions, which again, <clears throat> each time we've done a survey, the results have been dependent on the environment at the time. Yeah. And, and that's why I'm sort of, and I don't want to make this too complicated for you. Huh? We need to keep this. Nor does Jeff. <laughs> yeah, I know he does. I know. The longer you talk, the more we, <laughs> no, 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 no. we end up with. <laughs> I'm trying to make it simple here, Mr Chief Executive, and it might be as simple, right? and I don't want to sort of preempt council's discussion, you might actually have some specific focus groups that you've actually identified key parts of the community <laughs> that you actually then send an independent person out and actually have a sit down interview with them rather than a broader, you know, and that's just one, one option that's available that is actually simple and appropriate for your community. And I think that's what it actually needs it's to be fit for yeah. purpose. Mm. Yes, it's yeah. Yep. Mm. Yep. Agreed. All right. Just just as an aside, I was part of a um an LGNZ Zoom call two weeks ago and audit were on presenting. And at one point they commented that just a heads up, the audit mm -hmm. fees for the next year are going up significantly. So I jumped in and said, describe significantly. And even and they mm. wouldn't, they wouldn't even give a parameter, but they said significantly. So we can because they've gone into national recruiting to get more staff to manage their workload and are paying whatever that requires to be paid. So just a heads up that our audit fees for all this work that they are um, inputting into, not just insurance, but yeah. our audit bills will be significantly more expensive. Uh, and and. and I actually heard, but I wasn't on a Zoom call. I was actually in a um, conference in Taitura with in Queenstown, where Todd Beardsworth, who is the uh, um, from the Office of the Auditor General, he's the guy who actually engages auditors. He said, um, "Don't expect a decrease as any of your fees. Um, the range will be from eight percent will be the bare minimum." and probably more likely um, between 12 and 20%, depending on your on your council. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's significant. Mm -hmm. Sure is. Mm 
Okay, so um, that's something that we actually haven't seen from Audit New Zealand yet is actually a formal letter of engagement. Um, and I'm disappointed that we as an audit, so risk and assurance committee, one of our roles is to monitor the external auditor. Can't see him in the room, right? He, they should actually be here now. Here we are, May, end of May, we're starting well, I should have started the interim audit already. Should we give them a qualified opinion? <laughs> uh, I'm about to. Right? It won't be. It won't be a qualified opinion. It'll be actually quite a negative opinion. It would be an adverse opinion. Um, so their engagement with us was actually uh, us being governance is actually, in my opinion, poor because they should have been fronting. This is what we're doing for you. Are there any issues that you want? us to look at as part of your annual report as part of our planning. I'm not aware of that discussion happening with governance. So, you, so no. poor performance and an increase in fees. Mm. Yes. Not bad. Not bad. No. Not bad. And Kelly has highlighted under the second 5.5 risks, which is you know the risk that the auditors may not able may yes. be able to complete within the time frame yes. that they had previously done. I, I'm yep. conscious that South Wairapa still have not signed up for their last year's audit report. And, and I'm aware of a council which hasn't signed off their 21 year report. Okay. I think I said in there I did raise with them whether they could come a week earlier because from them leaving to mm. us to yes. have it in the yeah. junior. Yeah, absolutely. Five, so. mm. I have raised it with them and will continue to do so. They have assured me that they will get there. Um, and I go, yeah, right. Yeah. They did for us last year, they knew our date. Um, but yeah, there's definite, definite risk there. We're again. And didn't we sign off two days before Christmas? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We did. Well, of course, it's now not two days before Christmas, it's back to 31st of October. Yeah. So that's, so not only have they got, I mean, this is my concern. Normally, in the audit program when they're finishing by 31st of October, they would have done 80% of the council's interim audits by now. I'm not aware of one interim audit being completed to date. Our starts next week. Everything being done, not started, yeah. right? Yeah. So that to me is an indication there is actually going to be pressure. The other um, crystal ball I'm looking at using my lens, not a crystal ball, it's a lens I'm looking through, is the inexperienced staff they're actually bringing in takes significantly longer time to deal for something to be dealt with that an experienced auditor would actually deal with. And I'm dealing with a couple of those where they, we've actually had to tell the auditor how things actually really work, not how they perceive them to work. So that is actually significant risk from an audit. Um, and I think this committee should be monitoring the um, auditor's performance. Now, just looking at my calendar, when have we got our next meeting? Remind me, it's in August. 23rd of August. Um, I actually suggest we um, have a detailed update of the audit issues and ask our audit director to attend by teams at a specific time. Yeah. That's yeah. a good suggestion. Okay. Because then he we should we as governors should, right, as being have the you know council's delegate not delegated charged us with actually monitoring mm. audit New Zealand's or the auditor's performance. We need to have that to, to do that effectively, we need that discussion in August. Can I suggest before we have any more actions that we <laughs> <laughs> pass some recommendations? <laughs> oh, well, that's a step. Chief, I did it. No, no, it's, it's, it's a very valid and worthwhile conversation because it is quite a significant risk and the drag on the auditor. Um, oh creates an enormous pressure on the finance team if oh. the auditor is late. It, it's just, oh. especially in a year of long-term plan, yeah. uh, rating review and a representation review, that the impact of the auditor not turning up on time or delivering stuff on time, or as we've found in the past, uh, 
getting to a deadline and then list, issuing a list of questions mm -hmm. because they haven't actually been through the work, mm -hmm. um, it, it is enormously frustrating for the finance team. So I do feel for Kelly and, and the team mm -hmm. because they will be the brunt of this. Oh, and, and also just to add to your workload, Mr Chief Executive, I think we also need a discussion in August about the LTP audit. Because again, that could derail your LTP process. Now they won't know a lot because they'll be holding out for the election just to decide what happens with the three waters. In my opinion, that's too jolly late. But we can raise it if we have attendance. We can raise it as an issue that we want followed yes. up from them. Yeah. Yep. So it's not really work for. No, I know, no, no, no. But yeah. We just need to add that to our chief. Yeah. We need to advise the audit director, or Kelly, or the chief executive needs to, the audit director, the risk and assurance committee want him at, available at the next meeting. Yeah. And these are the items that we wish to discuss with him or her, whoever it may be at that time. Shark. Yeah. Shark. Shark. Still the same. Shark. Yeah, well, that, I'm aware of, of the same audit director. It's a, well, I've actually had audit directors change at the last minute too, like last minute, and then they are, then they build council for the additional time. Um, so I think we need to carefully craft some recommendations to um, council, on particularly on the resident survey. Um, now at the moment the recommendations say um, we receive the report. Um, we notes the proposed annual report timeline. Um, we haven't talked about the revaluation of the Manuka crop. Um, I think that's a given. We haven't done it. They've raised it in the management letter. Um, any any questions on on that issue? So then, um, does recommendation four need any enhancement, or Mr. Chief Executive, are you just happy that we? endorse the approach or do you want something stronger from this committee? Bearing in mind our discussions. No, and, and endorse, if this committee endorses the approach. I think if you endorse it. Yeah, then that puts it to bed Okay. in terms of risk so council doesn't have to revisit it. Okay. If it, if okay. It, we wouldn't take it back to council if it was endorsed by okay. the risk. Okay. Can, can, I, can I just be pedantic? Um, I think the, and I'm happy to move all four recommendations that um, the committee endorses the endorses the approach not to complete the um, the residence survey, noting the associated risks, the associated audit opinion risks. So we've actually talked about it's actually recording in the minutes that we have actually considered the um, risks. That the audit the risk, opinion risks or the audit opinion risks. Okay, it's just adding on at the end of the uh, the sentence. So after in the two thousand and twenty three year noting. Can, can I just ask with regard to that? Do, do we need to specifically because it's identified in the agenda item and we've discussed it because we don't add that right up with any other recommendation we make. Um, for clarity, the minutes will only ever show uh, the agenda item and the recommendation. It won't reflect the discussion okay. generally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. okay. That's fine. And I think it's because we've talked about yeah. the specific yeah. risks. Yeah. And I won't suggest we we'll, um, talk about um, leave that to council about how it formally um, undertakes a residence. Survey or you know satisfaction yep. in the future. Yep. What I think if it's point. noting that as a note, yep. when we come to the annual report discussion, I'd probably want to see that. Mm -hmm. I've moved that. Do I have a seconder? Uh, Deputy Mayor Dale, any further discussion? All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. It's carried. Annual plan. <coughs> I've done a bit of work, Kelly. The long term plan. Oh, mm, yeah, yeah. Long -term plan, yeah. 
Yeah, so um, as you know, we've started um, work on the long-term plan, um, including workshops with council. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So this paper just gives a bit of an update, um, highlights some really high-level dates and, and some risks for consideration by the committee as well. I'll leave, leave that there. Questions of Kelly? The processes are relentless, aren't they? <laughs> you just get one LTP signed off for next minute. Absolutely. Here we go again. But that to me is actually good, the epidemiologist, because to me as an LTP, you shouldn't be gearing up for an LTP. Some councils are actually quite a whole raft of staff to do it. You know, you know it's coming. Why not plan for it? That's, this is this is this is good. I mean, we noting noting the central top top, top key risk is the central government reforms. Yeah. I think that's going to be um, significant um, for the committee's information. I had a discussion with your person who's helping you with your revenue and financing policy on Monday. I'm comfortable with where that is heading. Um, I'm just very concerned about the implications of the government, all the government reforms on the LTP. Um, how you actually achieve this, I've got no idea. It's pretty sure. Oh, no. Well, the problem, the problem, Grace, is from a bean counting perspective, how do you actually strip out all the costs associated with the three waters mm -hmm. based on the current act and built as it stands at the moment and what that actually means for council. Um, a bigger question for council is if the government are hard and fast on 1 July 2026, what does the new council then actually look like without the three waters? Mm -hmm. is, it the, is it the same? Is it different? What's your focus? And to me, to try and put that in financial terms and in performance measures for your LTP, bearing in mind you won't do another LTP until a year after the reforms, what's it actually going to look like? And I think there is some significant risk around what does the LTP actually talk to the community about? I think if I can add, I think there's also quite high likelihood of um, complete, doing the LTP and then doing LTP amendments. Yeah. 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 Um, I think my personal view is DIA have dropped the ball on this one. Um, this, the impact of the three waters is not too dissimilar to the earthquake impact on the councils for Kaikoura and Christchurch. Those councils were allowed to do a three year financial plan. I would be hoping, but I don't, the best outcome for councils would be the DIA to suddenly wake up and say, we next year needed to do a three year plan because of the uncertainty over the, th the three waters. Mm -hmm. Particularly, there has been significant murmurings from DIA that they're carrying on full steam ahead and they expect some, some entities to stand up part way through a financial year. Oh my goodness, has anyone actually thought about the consequences of that? The chief executives of the Wellington region did, and they do not support going part way through a financial year. Yeah. All of the CEs yeah. want to go on a 1 July date yep. because the complication of part year uh, uh, transfer is, is significant work. Uh, part year rates, um, uh, staff transfers, asset transfers, valuations, debt numbers. It, it's it's significantly more complicated part oh. year. Yeah. So I, I think one of the other risks, if I could add, yeah. is potentially uh, the auditor risk, given yep. the complication around mm -hmm. a long term plan mm -hmm. will be much greater with this long-term plan compared to previous ones where you have a consistent balance sheet and the assets remaining. Uh, we may have challenges around the auditors completing their mm -hmm. audit of the consultation document on time. 
and the Risk and Assurance Committee may wish to consider at closer to the time whether or not they're prepared to go out with that consultation document that, that has yet to have had the audit approval. So I think that that yep. is actually going to be mm -hmm. one of our bigger risks is the time frame that the auditors will have in order to complete their review of the consultation documents. I totally think it won't be easy, especially when you've got significant assets yep. moving out of your balance sheet. Yep. And new audits and trying to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's just, it's, um, I used to be an auditor in, in the previous life, and one of my, sorry about that. Oh, got, yeah, most, most accountants have got to go through it, don't we, Kelly? Uh, it actually, you know, there are some one, there were one or two good auditors, aren't there? Um, Until we let you say. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, the, yes, the issue for me is, um, when I was, I worked in the UK, significant amount of my work in the UK was doing balance sheets, audited balance sheets for um, reorganisation of companies. It's a humongous job. And then we had to do it all, all over again. I remember doing one very large company, one of the largest companies in the world, and it was the U UK operations. We actually had to do two audits in three months right? because they decided to split this entity up on 31st of October. And then we had to do the statutory compliance as of 31st of December. That cost the, com the company a fortune. So again, while I'm pleased to hear the chief executives have made that decision, well, it may not be up to us. No, <laughs> thank you. All right, that that's my real concern. So really, in terms of this, we're just noting that oh, the the next LTP process is fraught with risk from a whole lot of different angles. That it's impossible for us at this point to even identify the risks, let alone try and mitigate them. To to totally. I, I would say we can start to identify them as to the mitigation because we don't know what the options are. We can't start to... Well, we can, having identified them, in my opinion, is a good start. If you dip, if you, you're heading your sandals business as usual, you're going to die. Well, as of a month ago, the transfer date was hard and fast at 1 July 24. So that's how quickly it moves. Yep, and it could move again <clears throat> because you know this requires a whole lot of new legislation, <clears throat> and they're hoping to have it in place before the election. <clears throat> a lot of urgency <clears throat> in Parliament then. So I keep saying, hope is not a strategy. <laughs> no, no, thank you. Right. So, um, do I have a? I've got no um, additional. Um, I we received the report. We received the report. And actually, I wonder whether Mr. Chief Chief Executive, we do need another resolution noting the significant number of risks associated around with this project. Again, because right, it's actually bringing to council that we actually it's there are yeah. huge risks, and that's that's our focus. Yeah, yeah, I'd happy to move both those. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Steve. C. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Yeah. Carried. Two resolutions. Yeah, receive yeah. the report. Yeah, and note the significant risks. the report, and the second one is oh, okay. risks. Yeah, significant note risks. Note the significant risks. Thank you. Treasury up update. Thank you. Are you again? Kerry, uh, so this is our standard Treasury report to the committee, um, updating our position and in, in forecast in regards to particularly council borrowings. Um, we have drawn down some additional borrowings, um, firstly to cover a bond maturing, which we then repaid, and then more recently, which this reports to 31st of March, since then we've also drawn down um, another $2.7 million from the LGFA to cover the loan-funded capital works that we've completed so far this year. Um, so no, no specific, I guess, concerns in, in, from me in terms of this report. I'm happy to take questions, though. Questions of Kelly? Grace. Um, one question, and I don't, it's 
it's kind of a good thing. And I'm just wondering, is there any risk with our liquidity being significantly higher than we need it to be? Is there a risk in having so much accessible cash? Do we do we need to be having it in a... So part of, I guess, part of the conversation um, is around how we utilise our funds. Mm -hmm. So some of that will be coming to the investment committee meeting this afternoon, and there's a recommendation to invest some further funds in um, managed funds. Mm -hmm. um, part of that also was the pre-funding of um, the bond maturing. So we did have some additional funds sitting there in order to repay the bond in April. Um, but yes, we do we do have a lot of um, cash and yeah, trying to manage that appropriately. That, that'll be part of the discussion in the next committee meeting. Investment straight after this, if you want to sit in, because that's exactly what will be discussed. Okay. okay. Um, this question, Kelly, obviously we, the previous strategy of our borrowings was around the three water transfer date. Yes. And that has now moved. Do you want to comment on that? Sure. So um, given the changes, um, we have the new borrowings, we have just um, drawn down to cover capital works done on three waters assets. Um, we have not continued with that strategy at the mature at the same time, um, just because of the uncertainty and then the risks around having so much, um, I guess, borrowing, short-term debt mm. and all of it maturing at the same time mm. as well, given it's not necessarily transferring to the water services entity on that date. Mm -hmm. So the new borrowings that we've drawn down, which don't show up in this report because of the timing, that's um, in the three to seven year bucket in terms of trying to, to make sure we're meeting our um, different limits in our know, treasury policy. So we are we have moved away from that strategy. Okay. Um, Kelly, the resolution as it stands at the moment, we're just noting we are non technically non-compliant and we've talked about that before. Yes, yeah. Do you just want to highlight what the yeah. so so the that again was in regards to the way we had structured our borrowings um, for three waters related debt. Um, so it means that we did have quite a lot maturing in the space of about six months. Um, so rather than spreading to terms, there was a, a concentrated amount there. So we are now in compliance with in one of the measures, um, which we went previously, but there is still one. We're not, um, but after this new borrowing, we do expect to be in full compliance. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Okay, I'm happy. I'm happy to move the recommendation. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Grace. No further discussion. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. It's carried. Progress on our audit up recommendation update, page 112. Another standard report to the committee and um, giving our progress against previous audit recommendations. So the change from last time is that we have now added in the new recommendations that audit made in the 2022 letter. So I have flagged the ones that are new as part of this report. So we continue to make progress against another a number of areas. Um, I mentioned audit uh, coming next week for two weeks to do some interim audit work. So they will review some of those areas and um, hopefully they will be cleared off in the next audit letter. Um, nothing else in particular I was um, going to raise for that report. But happy to for questions. Any questions of Kelly? This is what our significant fees purchases. <laughs> and if it's late, audit the auditors. Yeah. <laughs> and thanks for the finance team for ticking off. Yeah, it's fantastic to see all of these green ones appeared. Yep. Yep. And the fact that there's nothing urgent, it's all just necessary and, you know, advised, but there's nothing <coughs> of substance that's sitting there. So it's like been hexed up. Oh. Yeah, we've definitely been working on um, tightening up some of our processes, making things more automated, 
making sure we've got the right segregation and duty. So that's one person doing something yep. and someone else mm. signing off. Um, so, yeah, we made made some really good process there. Yeah. Thanks. That's good. You know, no, no questions of fellows? I've got a couple of minor ones. You talk about end of year. Do you mean end of calendar year or end of financial year? Just being the um, End of fiscal year, normally. Well. Yeah. Well, was calendar year time. I may not have put yeah. that in. Yeah, because you got June 23 as a specific date, but you've also got end of year. Yeah, yeah. I think where I said end of year, end of year I think I did mean end of calendar year. Okay. 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 Sorry, I'll, I'll clarify. Mm -hmm. clarify, clarify. Right. My, my, minor point. Minor <laughs> point. Um, the one that bugs me, there's a couple, there's a couple that bug me. And this, this is not this is not a bug at Kelly, this is a bug at our auditors, right? Errors of on page I can't see, I can't see it. On errors of classification of expenditure. Oh, yes. I mean are they just trying to justify your fee there? Yeah, yeah. you'll never get a blank bit of paper. I know you won't get never get a blank bit of paper, but is that's they're saying it's necessary. I mean, just remind me, how bad was it? Not bad? No, so uh, one of the disappointing things was, I suppose, that they didn't tell us about these during the audit. So there were several I looked at them later when they did send them that I thought, oh, that's not really misclassification. That's, I think I gave the example yeah. of the GPS. Yep. So if they'd come to us during the audit, we probably could have said, well, this is our rationale for coding. It mm. probably would have gone away, mm. but they actually didn't do that. Um, so I, uh, it wasn't something I was going to, you know, die in a ditch over, yeah. um, but I have given them the feedback that it's really important as they find issues like this to come and tell us yeah. because we can either, one, give them the reasons why we've done this certain way, yeah. it may not be an issue anymore, or two, if it is an actual issue, we can address it much earlier. Um, but yeah, in terms of misclassifications, um, they were quite minor and often still within that same activity, so it was just a general ledger line that doesn't change our reported results anyway. So. Well, they say, audit, they say when they talk to you that the job is to help us get better, but actually that suggests they're here to catch us rather than help, because if they were constructive, they would tell you as you find it and, and have that. Yeah, so that's, it wasn't the normal process. Um, so usually you would expect um, an exit meeting at the end of every audit to go over with us, and we didn't get that last year. And I, I have raised that with them, and they are conscious um, of this year. So question, Kelly, should we raise that with the director on the 23rd of um, August when we have the meeting online or in person? How are they going to address these issues? Because to me, it's actually just wasting everybody's time, you raising it, us responding, and us monitoring it. But it's actually technically a minor matter. Mm. How do we deal with those more efficiently? Well, it's an opportunity for governance to support oh, I told, uh, yeah, yeah. management. Yeah. If, if Kelly believes that's, and she'll make a short list probably of the things yeah. that yeah. Would, would like us to yeah. advocate on yeah. your team's behalf, that's the opportunity to do it. Mm. Um, yeah, and the other one was the Manuka crop. I thought we'd actually resolved previously not to revalue mm. it. And they're bringing it back in the management letter, which goes against their own policy. They're saying it's still beneficial. And I'm going, really? Well, it's worth $35,000. It's going to cost $24,000 to get revalued. Where's the benefit in that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so one of the reasons I've said they've left that they've in this year was in our um, valuers' comments, who completed the forest, the pine forest revaluation, he's made some comments around the Manuka and around potential ETS impacts. Oh, okay. So that's made all it, I think, oh, okay. we, we better leave it in. So, um, okay, thank you for that. Yeah. All right. So we'll have a, we'll, we'll have a talk to our valuer. This year. Yeah, that's, pro that's probably a good idea. Yeah. About the pine valuer. You ask, it's either an asset or a liability on any given day, isn't it? Yeah. I suppose. Um, so, yeah, I think okay, but we've we have also resolved <coughs> again not to revalue it as part of our direction, so that then we can manage that process. Thank you, Kelly. Um, so we've got a recommendation there that we receive the report and we note um, the progress being made to meet those recommendations. Do I have a mover, please? I'll move, do I have a seconder? 
Councillor Grace just pipped you at the post. <laughs> the hand is a little bit quicker. All those, no further discussion. All those in favour, please say aye. Thanks. Carrie, thank you very much for your work. Well, Kelly. Yeah, thank you, Kelly. Welcome, Jerry, health and safety, health, safety and wellbeing update. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'm pleased to give Kelly a little bit of a break uh, from, from the time today. <laughs> oh, was it wasn't a grilling. Oh. <laughs> Action, point. Action point list, yeah. yeah. Now it's your yeah. Uh, good. Um, so you'll see the uh, main focus for us has uh, been around recruitment, contractor management, emergency oh. management and staff engagement. So there's been quite a lot of work um, going on across these spaces. Um, I'm just wanting to highlight, particularly around emergency management, so we'll know from... Um, as the events of this year, that that's been very high on oh. councils and the community's um, expectations that, that we're um, able to respond, recover um, and prepare uh, sufficiently for, you know, probably not uh, if, but when things happen again. So we've been working really hard um, in that. Part of uh, what we've done at the Wellington Region uh, Civil Defence um, sector level is do a, um, excuse me, do a, um, Assess capability assessment, particularly around councils and Remo, who we uh, contract across the nine councils to support us in providing emergency management. Um, we've just uh, had a workshop yesterday actually based on what the findings of that were, so I've summarised some of those for you, but uh, keen to bring back once we've worked through workshops and what potential solutions might look like, um, and within that as well as risks. Uh, that, that we're highlighting that may need to be addressed. So I'll bring that back in more detail when that's available. I'm really pleased around our own capability internally though, um, and really wanted to acknowledge and thank our staff across the board, because it is right across the board that actually when we have events, they impact from customer services to communications to actually uh, the operations teams on the ground. So it does require an, a lot of weight pulling across the whole organisation, which of course, then will strain our BAU, so trying to deliver as well. But um, yeah, thanking the staff in that regard, but also for their commitment. Um, so you'll see we've done quite a bit of training mm -hmm. around emergency operation um, support and also our own internal stuff. So thanking them for their um, commitment to do that, because again, that takes them out of their BAU and we're, we're all busy. So yeah, they've made a really great effort uh, in that space. Um, and then just finally, just highlighting, you'll see, hopefully you've picked up, um, we've got quite an increase in uh, reporting of incidents uh, this quarter. Um, Jodie's been leading some really proactive work in that space, um, and some of the near miss reports particularly have been generated out of some fresh eyes, um, site inspections, and some of them are quite minor in terms of the, the actual nature of the report, but um, it's nice to be able to be at a level, so a couple of, you know, someone removed a standing mat, so potentially there was a long-term uh, risk for that person at standing desk um, in terms of their health, because uh, we need those mats to stand on. One is hydraulics of a chair, so they're really minor um, near miss identifications, but um, we've really wanted to start drilling down to prevention. The other important part is um, the site inspection. So the Health and Safety Committee are um, getting out and doing inspections of other sites, so not ones that they're familiar with, so stepping into fresh spaces. So with those fresh eyes and when you when you bring new people on board particularly, our uh, inductions are really robust around them identifying hazards and risks. So um, it's quite good when a new person starts, they you know start to question, oh, why do we do it that way, or have you thought about this? Or, when you're working in it every day, often things that might be a risk, you just just becomes the the frog in the beaker. You know, it just the heat just gradually comes mm -hmm. up rather than um, actually someone saying, "Hey, that's I think that's risky." So yeah, so um, I'll leave the report. They're happy to take some questions. Any questions of oh, Jerry? The staff believe over time or feel over time that working here they are more safe and that they are more, um, you know, that this work is actually um, improving their... We believe they do. So we've just done as part of um, sort of this, some of the staff engagement around staff wellbeing and also as part of actually Jeff's um, internal performance review last year, we asked a lot around health and safety, how safe staff felt and had really positive results. So. Um, yeah, we're, we're very confident that, that 
and I also think it's about giving them the voice to say if they don't feel safe how can they raise that how can so i think we're probably over asking a lot of the time you know around health and safety um and uh, jody will tell you you know someone says it and they roll their eyes but you know i think i'm pretty very confident that there's the avenues um if they wanted to raise something Thank did you. you have something to add to that Jeff? apart from the fact that both you and i are conflicted and you should probably ask staff <laughs> I'd be happy if you did. You know, that's okay. that's how much we're committed. If, if yeah. you know, um, I don't normally uh, allow or like not allow like councillors overstepping management and going directly to staff. But on an issue like uh, well-being, health and safety, um, I'd be more than happy if if um, councillors had a conversation with staff as to their feedback on how they feel, okay. whether they feel safe at work. Um, you know, that's that's certainly an area that. Um, yeah. I'd be happy for you to talk to them about. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Jeff, for that. I think that <clears throat> gives us some assurance. Right? Yeah. Um, and I think maybe um, maybe Deputy ME Dale, right? you might want to pick a representative on your team so you just, they don't have all. Oh, it, was, it was more just an observation. No, no. Sometimes you can go through a focus really hard on the process and, and yep. the assumption is that after all this work, you are now safer. Mm. Well, that's fine Do they feel as that? long as it's agreed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And, and to me, is it's again our residents' perception survey, right? You know, Jerry has listed a whole lot of things, right? And we are hopefully smart enough people to observe those and make our own judgments, in our opinion, does that actually help feel staff feel safe as well? And I think, now I'm disappointed in New Zealand society that we now actually have to have signs around, please respect our staff. If you go to the, I was in Wellington Airport yesterday and I, I spotted three signs, please respect our staff. So the fact that the signs are there indicates we're actually as a, a nation as a society is deteriorating, we're not actually we're attacking the messenger, right? Rather than the organisation that's causing the grief, right? The process often, often it's the process. Yeah. Uh, we had a conversation yesterday with Waka Kotahi about uh, potentially uh, how they might increase the speed limit from eighty to one hundred back to where it was, and uh, they managed to talk themselves into a circle as to. Uh, bureaucratically, how it was impossible for them to put things back the way they were a couple of months ago, uh, you know, and, and so, um, <laughs> yes, so yes. I didn't. I felt for the staff because it was the process that yes, was that. actually frustrating the outcome, not yeah. not the individuals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, any other comments? I, I just have a question, Jerry. Um, I always seem to pick on the contract and management. Um, is, does it is there get to a point where if the contractor is not lifting himself to a standard or herself or whoever, um, do you actually remove them from your contract or do you just keep working with them trying to get them to a level, acceptable level? Jody may be able to speak to that a bit more, but I could just start with, yeah, we haven't, um, there is really good support and we work quite closely with those that aren't meeting our com competency place. So we and there's only a small number of those. Um, it would come back to the managers to to be looking at the, you know, we do have some leverage in that space if they're not competent or of a level that we're comfortable with, that we do have the leverage of saying, well, actually, we, we won't be using it. We wouldn't remove them from the platform. Mm -hmm. It would be, um, we would, would stop, you know, we would stop using them. And the leverage we also have to is we're working across the three councils with SiteWise, so we're all sharing what, what that level looks like. So I don't know, Jodie, do you have anything to add to that? I mean, it's, 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 it's working with them, um, you know, reading them as well, when they're contractors as well. Um, <clears throat> some, some are at lower risk than others, and so we can, you know, remember, <laughs> exempt them from site lives if we want to, but um, most of us trying to work with them to get them where they need to be. It's beneficial for them as well, you know, by working with them to get them up to speed. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? 
I just have a quick question about the um, the staff wellbeing survey. Is this the first year it's been done? Um, oh, we can't compare it to previous year's results. No, so okay. this, is, this is a Taitora national survey that had been done across the country, yeah. kind of on the back of um, all the ups and downs, particularly around COVID and how, as a local government sector, council employees were, were faring and have feeling. Mm -hmm. um, so it was done at a national level, but we could use it, and we did, did get our own Carbon District Council results from it. So it was more that we were able to use um, than, than do our own one. So we haven't done a staff wellbeing survey, but we we did a, quite a lot of engagement with our strategy. So, and the, we're going to be reviewing that uh, later this year as well. So, yeah. Um, so this is probably a very dumb question. Is Taitura, that's that's your LGNZ so group, it is it? be called right. Solgum, okay. Society yeah. of Local Government Managers. Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Professional. That's the professional one as opposed to LGNZ, which is the government's organisation. Yeah. So once a couple of councils are pulled out of. Yeah, there, there needs to be. Yes. Yep, absolutely. They tried to amalgamate a few years ago in the top. Mm -hmm. face. Um, okay, any other questions? My, my only comment was over, um, I'm just aware of burnout in a number of um, civil defence headquarters, particularly Hawke's Bay, and I just wonder whether in due course, we might get some learnings from how we manage a long-term event like that. That's just something, right? Yes. Which I probably is on your agenda already. I don't want to add to it. Get told off if it's not. And my, this is my tongue-in-cheek one. Did we borrow those speed signs in your report from the new speed limit, the, the effective speed limit between Carter and Masterton? Because <laughs> 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 that's what it was last night. And this morning. All right. Like it was all right. Sorry. All right. We've got a recommendation there. Do I have a mover? Thank you, Councillor Steve. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Deputy Mayor Dale. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Next item is our government reform Thank update. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Chair, this is a, a joint report between uh, uh, Solitaire and myself. Welcome officially Solitaire. Oh, yeah. Hi. Hi. Good. So we've covered a range of issues across there, some of which I'm more across and some of which Solitaire is across. So uh, the particularly emergency management and mm. uh, some changes in terms of uh, privacy. So uh, happy to take questions unless you wanted to highlight anything uh, of specific interest, Solitaire? Um, probably the only one is the fact that the RMA reform date for the uh, going back to the select committee has been pushed back to the 26th, 27th of June. Um, and the last I heard reading some bits and pieces online yesterday is that this, the government is still intending to get this through before um, their training finishes. Uh, but I think that's a bit of a watch this space, but it does very much reinforce the three councils' decision um, to proceed with a district plan um, as yep. opposed to waiting for the government. Thank you. Um, yep. And I just put a new, um, as you'll see in the report, I've put a new um, topic just to discuss, um, which I think is a really good way that the government's gone about it, is strengthening the um, requirement to report on natural hazards in the Local Government Official Information and Meetings Act limb provisions. Um, they did a couple of changes to it. Most of it was in relation to the flood hazard zones and natural hazards and the requirement for regional councils to share data um, better. Uh, there also was some changes to the official information aspect of it. And that's more in relation to security and it's bringing it more in line with the Official Information Act, which is the one that central government uses. Yep. And basically, we don't get a lot of security information shared with us coming down from central government because our local government Official Information and Meetings Act doesn't have strong enough provisions to withhold um, sensitive information. So that's just a clarity that they've done on that one. But I thought it might just be of interest to elected members, so I've just included that. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Dale. Just a question at the start of the report, point two, and the significance it's got. The matters for decision in this report are not considered to be 
of significance under the significance and engagement policy. And then the very next bullet point says there are a number of significant pieces of work being completed by central government, which impacts local government. Can you help me out there, Jeff? Uh, uh, certainly. <laughs> that, um, yeah, so the significance and engagement policy is, is uh, talking about things that council have that our the decisions that we make that are important to our community uh, i guess what we are attempting to say here is uh, a lot of the decisions that are being made here aren't part of council's decision making authority and so uh, we're we're not going to consult with our community on things that we have no ability to change yeah uh, so that's that's really the subtle difference we should probably have been slightly clearer with our mm. wording there. Yeah, and the other the other point really is on page one for one, the first bullet point around the the tranche, the withdrawal of mm. you know, for, for this council, five point one million dollars of promised grant got withdrawn. Mm. Mm. And and you know, it seems to have um floated under the radar, but talk about renege promise. Mm. And and I just note the only res recommendation from this report is that we receive the report. I think it's a missed opportunity to actually publicly express That's our right. absolute, not just disappointment, but anger at being, I mean, that was part of the initial Garrett. bribe uh, yeah. to, yeah. to <laughs> enable yeah. council support for the, yeah. for the affordable water and three waters um, buy-in, okay, yes, the no voice of funding is there, but the enhancement, the, the, the icing on the cake was the two tranches of um, uh, government investment in our communities. And to give us 25% and then just decide at a whim to withdraw 75%, it's just extraordinary. Mm. And yet they got away with it. And I just wouldn't like us to oh. think that we miss the opportunity yep. to um, yeah. say that. Yep. Especially if you've used that 25% to start, start a project, project. Yes. that yes. you're yes. utilising the finish. other. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, yeah. and totally agree with the Deputy Mayor's comments. Um, it has, they have got away with it. Um, unfortunately, the government wasn't actually giving that money from their own coffers, they were giving it from your coffers anyway. They were actually asking the water entities to actually fund that second tranche by way of debt. And I think this, oh, I'm just going to be political here, I'll make a political statement, I'm supposed to be independent. This indicates to me that the three waters as they had originally planned with that tranche then being coming off their new balance sheet indicated that the new entities weren't be financially viable. Mm. Not so, our problem. Not, right? not, oh, not our, totally not, not our, our problem. No. You can only go off what the rules are of the day. Yep. When the rules change and it compromises oh. council, oh. that needs to be said. Oh, I'm not disagreeing it, right? And they've oh. painted it as them being frugal. Now, yes. and that's and, a, thank rather you. than it being a yeah. for us and saying sorry about it. They're going, oh, well, we've been very sensible and not taking on as much debt. But that's, that's say, a good but, news story. But they actually said, we just, no, they didn't even say where it was coming from. They they gave the impression, this is the bit that annoys mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. oh, because of our, we, we need to go back to our um, bread and butter, mm -hmm. we won't be giving this to councils. Well, they weren't giving it in the first place. So there was actually two messages, right? One is they broke the promise. Mm. And two is they were setting someone up for a fail. Mm. So it was actually... Um, have got, all, got all that for the recommendation, <laughs> So, well, you're going to write the recommendation. I see you got some... In addition to that, when the Minister made the announcement of the change, it was not included in the announcement no. of the change. That's right, Kerry. And, we, later. Yeah. and mm -hmm. when an email came out with the press release, it wasn't in the press release. It was only when uh, the NTU no. sent out an email. It was attached in page three of the attachment of the email that mentioned that the better off fund, the second okay. tranche of better off funding had been withdrawn. Mm -hmm. So it was never highlighted. It was buried. Um, and I was also talking about lack of transparency. It's not affecting this council, but just highlights the behaviour of government over the, 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 the water reforms. 
Um, there is actually a, an 11th entity called the Chatham Islands. It's got no release. There was a statement made by the minister that the, the government will secure all funding necessary to support the Chatham Islands. Guess what? In this last week's budget, guess what? Nothing. Despite they made a big song and dance about, you know, we're giving them 10 million for their power. Um, the council was promised two years ago an increased level of funding to do everything. They got nothing more than what they already get. So again, broken promises all round. Mm -hmm. It's the deputy mayor. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy to um, receive a further recommendation, Mr. Deputy Mayor, if you want to craft something. Well, there's better people than me to craft it, but I just don't want to miss the opportunity to not just receive the report, but to, um, and stronger than note, but. Um, um, I like No, I would, can I go for you on some words? Go on. Um, don't write them down yet, Robin. We'll right, get the chief executive to critique them. Um, <laughs> as I say, thank you, right? um, I think the committee expresses its, um, no, that's not disappointment. It found dissatisfaction. Dissatisfaction? <laughs> no, it's more than dissatisfaction. Right? Oh. I mean, we we are actually disapproval. Uh, mm. We can't disapprove us. Yeah. Profound disappointment. I think. Profound disappointment. Yeah, I like right. That. It's astounded. Profound <laughs> disappointment. Outrage. <laughs> yeah. Out, <laughs> outrage. No. Profound disappointment. Yeah. Of the withdrawal. The reneging of. Reneging, yeah, reneging. nice, Grace, nice. Keep, no, it keep it going. Reneging of the um, proposed trans to funding. Better off. Oh. Better off funding. It wasn't just proposed though. It had been yeah. committed. Committed. Yeah. yeah committed. 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 Yep. Yeah. Nice. Yep. You got that, Robin? Yep. Right. Which has jeopardised the. Oh, oh I like this. I don't like this. <laughs> no, ah, okay. Following on from Steve, which which poses additional risks for this council. Yeah, yeah. In context of this committee. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got any big words to add, Brian? No. Thanks for big words there. Thanks the team to get a good resolution. Yeah. Consensus by committee. I've yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. mm -hmm. Want me to read what I've got? Yeah. yeah, please. The committee expresses its profound disappointment of the reneging of the committed tranche to funding. Yep. Make it better off funding, which poses additional risks to the council in the context of this committee. No, just to, no. just to, just this part of the council. The council. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I'm going to put that figure in there. Five point one million. Just in, yep, we can. Mm. Yep, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. Five point one million. Yep. And expressing our profound disappointment. Who to? Mm -hmm. Does it need to be said to government, or and then there's? I sort think. Of, I think. Well, to the minister. Well, we. Mm. So, so we. My my, my view is. <laughs> it can actually. <laughs> the, the this then should go to council, and council should formally yes. agree. What it does with it. Yeah. What it yep. does with it. Okay. Cool. okay. Include it and see it. Pardon? The chair could potentially include it in his, his uh, update letter. Report. Yes. Report yep. update. Yeah. Cool. I like that. Nice work, team. Mm. Yep. Okay. Yep. Totally. Yep. Right. <coughs> we, have a, we have a mover. Do we have a seconder for that, we, Robin? Oh, see. Yeah, we've got a mover was Council Deputy Mayor Dale seconded. Councillor Steve C. Yeah. Any further discussion? All those in favour, please say aye. Oh, those against, carry. Thank you, Solitaire, for bringing yeah, your report. Appreciate that. Any news? We're still holding together. Any no, she just, she's boiling those little Cheerios in front of the fire. Okay, all right. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for that. Can't I write that now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. All right. Can I have a mover to move into yeah. public excluded? Do I have a seconder? Yeah. It was um, Dale and Steve again. All yeah. those in favour, please say aye. aye. Project update 7.1. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Just conscious of time.